Mr. Fleckenstein, first of all, thank you for your time today. Um, I for, I, for first thing that I must ask you is about uh, our blockage with Bulgaria and now the Portuguese proposal. What is your position about this proposal? I think the Portuguese presidency did really their utmost to find a solution to the Bulgarian government. But at the end, they did not agree. So we have the situation we have now. And uh, I really hope that on the basis of what has been discussed during the Portuguese presidency, the Slovenian may find, with the help of Commission and the pushing of the European Parliament, a solution which would be adequate. This one is not. During these two days, during the forum, there are a lot of guests around Europe. Uh, there are representatives from the United States also. But uh, Bulgaria has only one representative and it's the general director of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, do you think this is a good step for building bridges, maybe? Uh, of course, it would have been better if uh, the foreign minister would be here, but we should not overdo it. They have election campaign. They are in a situation that they are not knowing what is helping in the elections and what not. So they are all, like all politicians in all countries, for the time being, a bit uh, limited, maybe. <laughs> And uh, I would not overestimate that uh, next time I'm sure the Bulgarian foreign minister will be here or someone else from the government. Yesterday, Mr. Palmer said that uh, the blockage of North Macedonia and Albania has influence uh, for losing credibility of the United States and you. How do you see this? He's I right. mean, He's at right. the region. I'm so sorry to say that he is right. Uh, of course, it's hard to see the credibility if European Union is not delivering. We ask uh, North Macedonian, we ask uh, Albania to deliver their work. They did. And now it's up to the European Union to deliver and they are incapable to do so. And that's because of our strange rules that you need really 27 yes. You should not forget that uh, the disappointment about the situation is not only here in the region and here in Ohrid and in North Macedonia. It's also a disappointment for the Commission. It's also a disappointment for the European Parliament which always stand close to our North Mas uh, our Macedonian friends. But um, it doesn't help. We have to change the rules in the European Union because always to wait until the last stubborn one agrees is a very difficult uh, procedure. You said that the rules need, need to be changed. How? What needs to be done? We for need uh, for the Council and uh, for the Foreign Minister uh, the opportunity to decide with the majority, which majority soever, maybe not only a simple majority, but uh, it's incredible that we have to do that all in one. And the more members we have in the European Union, the less it will work. And I appreciate very much that the German foreign minister, for example, is really lobbying for that. And uh, also the conference of the, on the future of Europe will uh, have a discussion about these rules, which really doesn't work anymore. Germany has elections this autumn. Yes. Merkel is leaving. What to expect and how this will influence on enlargement? Well, I, I think the first good news is whatever, what kind of government we get after the elections with green leadership or with CDU or with SPD, Chancellor uh, Scholz, 
it will be always a pro-European uh, government and it will be one who is convinced that Western Balkan belongs in the EU. So there will be not a real change in the principles and how much they are engaged and pushing and uh, outspoken. We have to see and have to wait uh, for the next uh, government. But I'm quite optimistic that you can count on Germany, whatever, what kind of government we have. Had. About the European Parliament, how uh, in the next period they can help to open the door for North Macedonia in Albania. I know that they don't have influence on the European Council, but maybe they can do some steps to to help to open the door. Yes, I, I think uh, they can be very clear and outspoken as they were in the past. Uh, you are right, they are not the one who decides. This is only the Council. But to make the public discussion about that, the pushing for enlargement, uh, also to a real issue in the future, the European Parliament can do a lot, at least verbally and in debates and uh, in clear statements. And I'm sure the European Parliament will do that. You mentioned uh, the conference on the future of Europe. Today is the first uh, session for the Western Balkans. Why so late for the Western Balkans? Because the conference started at, uh, at May. Whose fault is, is this? Well, this Did the EU forgot the, the Western Balkans or Western Balkans forgot to mention to you that they, they are part of, of Europe? Well, first of all, there were a lot of Organized, organizing things and so on. But uh, in one point, I am very uh, disappointed. Uh, I think we speak about the future of Europe, not the present of Europe. And the Western Balkan countries, I think, should be part of that debate, not only in a site uh, thing, but in the plenary and elsewhere. Uh, it's a lack of uh, empathy some of these bureaucrats have, obviously. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.